31st, 2017, 5.30 p.m. in the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Would you all please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Kathleen, roll we'll call, please. Fleming? Campbell? Here. Scott? Here. Wilson? Here. Davidson? Here. Okay, we have a proclamation, first off. Yes, Your Honor, I'm uh, proud to read this. Whereas in 2000, the Burlington Police Department instituted an award for Officer of the Year, whereby officers had the opportunity to nominate a fellow officer for his or her contribution to the department and to the community as a whole. And whereas the award was renamed Lieutenant Steve Cassidy Officer of the Year Award in uh, memorial to Lieutenant Cassidy, who exemplified the characteristics of an, officer, of an officer going above and beyond the expectations on a daily basis. And whereas in 20, the 2016 award recipient has been with the department since 1997 and served as patrol officer and as a detective in the Criminal Investigation Division prior to being promoted to sergeant in March of 2006. He performs many roles in his day-to-day -day operations of the department and is a trusted leader and role model for officers during interaction with officers and the general public. He has fulfilled a command position in the Burlington Police Department on the Tactical Response Unit since its inception and makes well-educated, informed decisions in response planning and execution of high-risk responses. His care and concern for members of the department and the community was exhibited during a recent fundraising event for Sergeant Van Vertlo and his family. He, uh, he has confidence in his ability to lead the department into the future and shows dedication to the community through his actions. Now, therefore, we the City Council of the City of Burlington, Iowa, do hereby announce and proclaim the 17th award recipient and the 2016 Officer of the Year as Sergeant Joel Larkins. In recognition of his positive attitude in providing service to our community throughout 2016, we therefore call upon our citizens to especially honor and show our sincere appreciation to Sergeant Larkins for his dedication and sacrifices he makes by deed, remark, and attitude. <coughs> Signed and sealed the 21st day of February 2016, Shane McCampbell, Mayor. Cool. tonight two mayor's awards uh, one is a first uh, but first off we have uh, uh, my mayor's award to uh, this has uh, personal feelings for me because I have a history with uh, this place um, I had I think I got broke up at Kenny's Roller Ranch one time by a girl um, I th I'm sure I've got disrespected several times by the roller skates out there but it was a fantastic time and it's good clean fun and we need more places like that and you help provide it I'm glad to give you this award tonight. Uh, be it known on behalf of the city of Burlington, Iowa, I'd like to thank you for being a model Burlingtonian. Your commitment to providing a safe and healthy activity of the, for the youth of this community over the years has meant so much to so many. The city is grateful for all that you do to make Burlington a great place to live, work, and play. On February 21st, 2017, this Amir's Award is presented to Tim Bear Clout. Come on down. There he is. <laughs> Star, my friend, and uh, you have to put this on so uh, you can represent there. And uh, <coughs> right. can I get a picture taken with you so people can think I'm cool for a minute? Come back up. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> 
Thank you. I'm from this side. I'm gonna I appreciate to everybody for doing this. Uh, we do roll a lot at the skating rink, and well, actually, everything we do rolls. We roll in the putt putt. We roll in the basketball bank shot. We roll in the, the baseball and the skating rink. So come on out and roll. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. All right. Man, I'll tell you what, he's making me want to get out and roll. Don, meet you there. We'll talk about it later. All right, thank you, Tim. Uh, this uh, award is a first, and uh, I'm really glad to be giving this out. We had a conversation um, over the budget where some information came out where they said, well, we should have replaced some equipment years ago. And we're still talking about well, whether or not we're going to try to squeeze it past another year, and I didn't want to get lost in the shuffle, the fact that we should have replaced this years ago. I said, well, who is this guy that kept this machinery running? They gave me his name, and uh, I am so excited to be giving away tonight the, the very first Mayor's MacGyver Award. So, uh, <clears throat> on behalf of the city of Burlington, Iowa, I would like to present you with the Mayor's MacGyver Award. Angus MacGyver was known for having the ability to deactivate a bomb with a piece of chewing gum and a paper clip. You have kept the pump for the irrigation system working well past its shelf life, and the taxpayers of this city owe you a debt of gratitude. Thank you for your hard work and your get her doneness. On February 21st, 2017, this Mayor's MacGyver Award is presented to Ted Tillo. Come on down, come on down. You when you talk, though, it's, you know, face us so everybody can see you. Let me go to the microphone. So, um, basically, thank you. I'm just doing my job and uh, trying to do it efficiently. That's all it is to it. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tim. We appreciate you, MacGyver. Enjoy the rest of your evening. All right. Okay, next on the uh, agenda is the consent agenda. All matters listed under item one, consent agenda, having been discussed or considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If a discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Uh, on the consent, we have the usual finances and miscellaneous, minutes of previous meetings, payroll and city claims, beer, liquor, wine, and cigarettes, reports and bonds. We have four resolutions. Um, first is a resolution approving agreement with Veenstra and Kim, Inc. for engineering services for the sanitary sewer rate study and stormwater utility feasibility study. The second is a resolution approving agreement with Burlington Steamboat Days for BSD event operations and for concessions at the Point of Burlington building. The third is a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between Des Moines County, Des Moines County Secondary Roads and the City of Burlington. And the fourth resolution is a resolution approving urban revitalization tax exemptions pursuant to Chapter 404 of the State of Iowa, or, I'm sorry, of the State Code of Iowa tax abatements. And Mayor Pro Tem, we also have some appointments. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. We have a newly established Tree Advisory Board, and we have four members that we're going to appoint this evening: Scott Zeiser, Lisa Locke, Stacy Rector, and Joyce Tager. And also, we need to uh, appoint our Fire Chief Matt Trexel to the Enhanced 911 Service Board. Um, anybody from the audience? Lovely. Okay, Council? Yes, Your Honor, I'd like to uh, remove number two from the <coughs> consent agenda and put on the regular agenda. <coughs> what are you removing? Steamboat Number two. Oh. <coughs> from the consent. Okay. On the consent. I, I got you. I got you. Okay. Uh, Kathleen. I need some yeah. energy resolution. I'm uh, motion to approve all listed under item one consent agenda. As amended. As amended. Second. 
Kathleen. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. I seven. <clears throat> uh, Your Honor, I have a resolution setting date for public hearing for consideration of fiscal year 2017-2018 budget. Second. And that date is what? Do I have a second? Um, March. Yeah, March sixth. Okay. Second. Thank you, sir. Moved and second. <clears throat> Kathleen? McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Okay, budget set for March 6th. Uh, moving right along, next we have, uh, this is time set for hearing for consideration of the sale of property locally known as 1722 Dodge Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Publication in the hot has been made. Uh, Mr. Tislin. This is a single-family property the city acquired through the abandoned building uh, program through 657A. <clears throat> it's located at the end of Dodge Street, just west of Perkins, um, west of the former Perkins School. Uh, it is a single-family residence. Um, does need quite a bit of repair and work uh, to be done before occupancy. It is a one-and-a-half-story home, approximately 1,500 square feet, with four bedrooms and one bath, and a 70 by 112-foot lot um, as with our uh, sales of these type of properties uh, does have some conditions defective items shall be repaired as necessary a licensed plumber and electrician shall inspect and sign off that such items uh, in the property are meet or are brought up to code prior to occupancy all permits shall be received and codes met uh, for work and occupancy of the home purchaser shall maintain property yard and, and yard and hold insurance upon approval of sale by the council Work shall be initiated within 60 days and completed within 180 days. Uh, an extension of 180 days may be granted if progress is made. Um, the purchaser uh, shall pay a minimum of $500 or 10% down upon approval of sale with uh, the entire amount paid within 30 days of approval of sale by the council. Property transfer by quick claim deed. Uh, currently, we have one uh, bid in the amount of uh, $500 from Don Harder, 1018 Monticello Drive. Um, that if there's any other questions I can try and answer them I think uh, I think I get your answer Did, were you about to say something okay this is a lovely property as you can tell by the picture it's just begging for a little love and attention <clears throat> we're gonna open up these bids tonight we've already got one bid in at $500 if your name obviously since we only have one bidder if you're gonna put a bid in we're gonna ask that you come and give your name and your address here at the uh, podium let the bidding begin we have an opening bid of 500 from Don Harder, do I have a bid of a thousand? Fifteen hundred? Do I have a bid of fifteen hundred? I start too low. Do I have a bid of two thousand? <laughs> You're a lovely crowd tonight, but you guys aren't working with me. <laughs> We've got a bid of five hundred. Well, I tell you, I just can't believe that people aren't just trying to bust the doors down for this. Look at that lovely property. <laughs> we got a bid of five hundred. Going once. 500 going twice, all right, 500 going three times. Are you able to tear it down? If somebody purchased, can you tear it down? Can, can you come to the... the? The bid we have is for uh, rehab of the property. It is able to be tore down. Uh, that would, would be considered by council, I guess, highest and best use of the property, whether something's rebuilt there or not. But uh, you could rebuild on the property. Um, it could be uh, demolished. The conditions are to rehab it currently, uh, and that's the intent of the existing bidder is to rehab it. Okay. So it's uh, it's to rehab. We've got a bid of 500. It's going to make somebody a lovely home. Going, going once. Uh, well, just right. just to clarify, <coughs> yeah. what Eric is saying is you certainly can entertain a bid to do something other than for a rehab. If you want to do something other than that, you can you can come forward and give your proposal about what you're looking to do. They have some pre-qualifications on this, but they can amend those. But not. But we're not looking just for it, for it to get torn down. Somebody's got to build something on it. No, come no come come up. Can you come, come up to the mic? Larry Caskin, 
Uh, we have had these properties in the past where they have demoed the property and rebuilt on the property. Um, and it really doesn't make us any difference if you rehab it or, or if you remove the building and build a new one. But the, the same, we have adhered to the same uh, time frame is we, we want a new house there within a year. The only other time we've had it demoed is if a neighbor bought it. Right. Um, if a neighbor buys it and we just want to have it in green space, that's fine. Expand the lot but and combine the lot. It does need to be an adjacent neighbor. But this property is being sold, though, to be developed, uh, whether it's kind of three tapped or... Developed three. one way or the other. So if you bought it and tore it down, you had to put something on it within one year if you're not... We're across the street. So we're Correct. not connected. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're back... Back to the bidding. I've got a bid at 500. Is anybody so else? That answers honest? your question. That answers my question. We live across the street and didn't want to build anything on it. So. Yeah, that, yeah, that won't work. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else put in a bid? I'm glad you asked, though. That's good. Going once again. <laughs> going twice again. <laughs> going three times for the last time. We're going we're gonna to sell this property. It's sold to uh, Don Harder for $500. Yeah. Motion to close. Second. Kaplan. McCampbell. Aye. Scott. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Resolution first. Okay. A resolution approving the sale of property locally known as 1722 Dodge Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Second. And and then as amended. To amend Exhibit C of the resolution approving the sale of property locally known as 1722 Dodge Street, City of Burlington, Des Moines County, Iowa, that the property property be sold to Don Harder of 1018 Monticello Drive, Burlington, Iowa, in the amount of five hundred dollars. Second. Moved and second. Kathleen. McCampbell. Aye. Scott. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Davidson. Aye. I mean, that's going to make Don a lovely home. I'm sure he's going to move into it as soon as possible. I'm, 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 as, amended. As, as amended. Yes. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Now, can I say it? It's going to make somebody a lovely home. I'm sure Don's going to move into it as soon as possible. Okay, uh, next is consideration of a sale of property locally known as 2500 Summer Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Mr. Tisley? This is the former armory property. Uh, located at 2500 Summer Street, uh, just to the east of the airport. Uh, this is uh, property, I guess, through the 2080 agreement, uh, the intergovernmental agreement with the Southeast Iowa Regional Airport Authority that was approved in 2016. It stated that the property shall be uh, deeded over to the um, so deed the uh, real estate to the airport authority. Uh, some of the conditions were that it will uh, remain in use by the city of Burlington. Currently, the Public Works Department, Forestry, and Police Department use this property for storage. Uh, and that uh, use uh, can continue under the 2080 agreement. Um, so this is simply a transfer of property or ownership of the property from the city of Burlington to the airport authority uh, as per the 2080 agreement that was previously approved. Just following through with what we said it before. <clears throat> Anybody from the audience has any questions or comments? Okay. Council. No. Okay. Move to close. Second. Kathleen. McCampbell. Aye. Scott. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Davidson. Aye. I have a resolution approving the sale of property locally known as 2500 Summer Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Second. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Okay. Got that done. Uh, this is a time for consideration of an ordinance prohibiting the construction of wells within the city limits for use as potable water source. <coughs> I'll put up a map here from the computer if we can switch over to the computer. 
Uh, this ordinance is a, is a change that comes from a mon um, based on a monitoring site at South and Madison. Um, the, the, well, the ordinance change will restrict non-potable wells from being installed in, in this uh, boundary area and the change to the ordinance um, verbally describes that boundary. Um, with the plume in that area, the DNR has suggested this as a, as a <clears throat> way to help mitigate the problems generated from the plume. Potable wells. <clears throat> That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you, man. Lovely. Questions from the audience? You see none? Council? I'm good. Oh, okay. I'm good. I have a motion to close. Second. Moved and second, Captain. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. I have a motion for preliminary adoption of the first reading of an ordinance prohibiting the construction of wells within the city limits for use as potable water sources. Second? Second. Thank you. Kathleen? McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Well done. Uh, next is consideration of voluntary severance of territory. <clears throat> Mr. Tisdall? Nice show map on the right here. This is a request to voluntary uh, sever from the city of Burlington uh, for the properties at 104, 105 O'Connell Beach Road. Um, this did go to the Planning Commission uh, for consideration uh, on uh, January 17th and was recommended for approval 5 to 0. Um, the area is not able to be served by city services and is not in a future growth area. Um, and based on no uh, city access to get into the property and uh, no services being provided to the property. Uh, they did recommend approval to uh, sever this property. Um, and that, that's the basis for the application as well by the property owners was not receiving any city services. So. Any questions or concerns from the audience? See none. Council? No. Good. Motion to close your order. Second. Moved and second. Kathleen? McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. I said it. Your Honor, I have a uh, resolution approving voluntary severance of ter territory. Second. Thank you, Annie. Complain. Thanks, Bill. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Okay, we've got an ordinance. We have a motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance amending sections 170.75, signs of chapter 170, zoning code of the Burlington Municipal Code. Second. Moved in second. Mr. Tesla. Uh, this is a request to change the sign code by allowing uh, freestanding signs that are shared by two or more separate businesses located on the same property uh, within the Roosevelt Commercial uh, District to be up to 60 feet in height. Uh, provided the monument sign it the sign is a monument sign and includes a landscaped area surrounding the sign as well as uh, common freestanding pole signs that are shared by two or more separate businesses located on the same property shall be allowed to increase up to 50 50 percent larger than the maximum area up to 375 square feet uh, this did go to the planning and zoning commission on december 20th and was voted four to zero to recommend approval uh, these were changes were based on the request of the applicant and the lack of guidance or inclusion in the current comprehensive plan. Um, there's no reference to signage in our current plan, so uh, they felt uh, that is appropriate to change. Thank you for the info. Um, is there anybody from the audience that has any questions or concerns over the signs? I see none. Council? Your Honor, I do have a motion to amend to amend the motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance amending sections 170.75, signs of chapter 70, 170, zoning code of the Burlington Municipal Code to read as follows. For waiver of preliminary consideration and adoption of the second reading and for final adoption of the ordinance amending section 170.75, signs of chapter 170, zoning code of the, code of the Burlington Municipal Code. Okay, let's uh, vote on the amendment. Second. second. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Let's vote on the uh, amendment first. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. 
Nicholson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. And now as amended? McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Okay. Resolutions. Your Honor, I move for the approval of the white box in the depot for Greer's restaurant. Need a second. 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 <laughs> did you want to let that go as is, Jim, or did you want to amend that? Well, let's have some discussion first here. Okay. Then we can, I can offer that. Okay. Well, your resolution here before you is to approve uh, up to $146,400 to be used towards the white boxing costs of uh, the depot structure for Greer's restaurant. Uh, this went through. Uh, after discussion from the council um, back in August and then into the beginning part of January this year, it went to the Economic Development Committee who did recommend uh, approval of using the Economic Development Subfund of the Local Option Sales Tax uh, for this purpose, uh, and it's now brought before you for consideration. One of the next steps that would be uh, that we'll have to work on is getting a lease language in place. So we'll, we'll be, you know, we have uh, from the developer or from, well, Matt, uh, the, um, some, some proposed terms to have in it, but those were under some different conditions that we were looking at what that lease would be. So we need to get some terms back to you. Uh, we'll be talking with Jesse Caston and our city attorney looking at what you'd given to us and uh, looking at what they're looking at for trying to get a letter of intent drawn up so we can get that lease done if you do uh, approve this resolution. Sir, before we move forward, is anybody from the audience has any questions or concerns? See none? Okay. Um, Eric, do you have anything to add to that? Okay. Council? I have a couple of items, amendments I'd like to have us consider. In the first sentence, it says, whereas the developer, Matt Murray, has requested the city council to consider white boxing the depot for the development, and I'd like to amend it to say, of the area known, formerly known, excuse me, of the area formerly known as Greer's Restaurant in the depot. I would move to amend to add that language. Second. Can you repeat that? Can you repeat so that? the sentence will read, White boxing the depot for the development of the area formerly known as Greer's Restaurant. It's like the artist formerly known as Prince, kind of. <laughs> yes. Okay. Is that all? Is that all we got? Uh, for that, I, but we need to deal with this, and then I have another. Okay. Well, I, I uh, um, Jim had mentioned this to me earlier, and I uh, think that's wise, especially with what Jim just said, um, that um, we have to have a uh, lease agreement that uh, all parties concerned with. If that shouldn't happen, we still need to do this. We still need to do this white boxing for whoever might go into that area. And the second point I would like to make is this. Uh, this is going much further than what the developer had asked us to go, but it's a, I think it's very smart on the part of the Public Works uh, Department to make those recommendations that that uh, sewer line be replaced and and uh, a, a couple of, of the other things that he added, the sidewalk repairs and that sort of thing. That That is something as a uh, landlord that uh, uh, would be responsible for in any kind of development. So it's, I mean, this is just part of developing that building, so I think it's a, I think it's a, just a wise decision on the on the staff's part and on the uh, developer's part. Yeah, and it will be so much easier to do those kinds of repairs while no one's in there trying to conduct business. So, yep. And, and this that was my point. The, other, the questions I raised last week is, if we're going to do something, it ought to be for any particular reason, not just for this particular reason, if that's our goal. So that's why I offer that amendment. I have another one too, but we need to deal with this one. Okay, first. well, can, we need to deal with one minute. Okay. 
So we're going to vote on Jim's amendment. Right. Okay. So a yes vote would be if you're agreeing with Jim on that change. Okay. McCampbell? Yes. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Uh, thank you, Mr. Scott, for bringing that to our attention. And then, Your Honor, I'd like to move to amend the last sentence of the resolution to read, now therefore be it resolved by the city Burlington, Iowa City Council that the economic development sum fund and the local option sales tax fund be used as a funding source for the white box of the depot for future, and then strike the word restaurant, development in an amount up to 146400 Second. And I, I offer that not because I'm against a restaurant being in there, but I, I want it to be clear that we're doing this for whatever type of business. Ready to vote on this Ready. amendment? <coughs> McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. And then, Your Honor, I have a question. Maybe Mr. McGregor can answer this question. Do we really need $146,400 to do what we're supposed to do here? I think it's in the city's best interest to plan for that type of budget for the white boxing of, of this facility. That number's a little hard for me to swallow. It just seems like, an <coughs> it seems like a lot. Was there some discussion with the de potential developer about him covering part of that cost, or is this only <coughs> our portion of what? He'll have some costs in, in the facility himself, but as far as the white boxing, that was strictly uh, our part. There were some, th do you still have that on your computer? Some things that I had originally had as part of the white boxing process. And after speaking with Mr. Murray, he said that, that those are things that he would take care of. Uh, the items amounted to about $4,000, give or take. They, maybe they were more than that, but I, I, I believe I added sprinklers in there. They were about 14,000, I apologize. I should have switch over to the computer here. So, and the thing that isn't really shown in here is the cost that we're going to have to have to have a, a an architect look at this and draw plans and specs to be able to go out to bid for these items. Yes, yeah, so it was fourteen thousand that that Mr. Murray said that he would take care of as part of the white boxing. Um, during that, I, I had a revelation that we needed to have sprinklers inside of that facility in order for him to house people in the restaurant. Hence the ten thousand dollars below that. So, I, I was about the same as what I had initially projected for for dollars. It was just some of the things have been taken care of. Any other questions for Nick? Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Are we ready to move forward? Okay, Kathleen. McCampbell. No. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? No. Uh, the reason I'm voting no is because I want to come back with a better price. Well, we'll have time to deal with it. Uh, next resolution. So that resolution fails, is that correct? Kevin. Oh, does it without Bob being here with the two two? Right. Okay. Or no, there's going to be some differences of, of thought about what white what our costs are. The develop the tenant is looking at this that we're talking about some costs that he doesn't feel are necessary for this. Um, and I don't want us to, from a staff perspective having to make an argument about whether those things are necessary or not. Um, are you asking us to have some negotiation in regards to the other terms that both parties are in agreement on? I'd, I'd like to hear that before I, I vote I would in favor of this. Definitely. Okay. So we'll have to somehow have some level of discussion with you, Matt, in regards to that. I want, I want to be clear, I'm not against the development of that particular, as a matter of fact, I think it needs to be, otherwise it needs to be gone. But 
I want to hear the details. So we're good? <clears throat> okay. Uh, next resolution. Your Honor, I move the approving of a subordination agreement. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. This is a home that was part of a owner-occupied rehab grant that the city received a few years ago uh, in the north, uh, I guess around Oak Street, Osborne Street, uh, Sunnyside, uh, North Street. Uh, and the owner's uh, <coughs> looking to refinance his home to do additional improvements to the home. So he originally received uh, some money from the grant to do improvements to the home, and now he's at a point where he's uh, the value's increased in wanting to refinance to do additional uh, work to his home as well. It's at 1750 15 Sunnyside <coughs> Avenue, and the owner's James Scudder. Uh, the grant requires a retention time period of ownership of the home, and a certain percentage is forgiven each year. So uh, currently, the, if the homeowner were to sell, he would owe around $10,500. Uh, the property currently appraised for $70,000, so he's... Uh, looking to take out uh, some money out of that uh, to do additional work to his home. Uh, so this would be uh, subordination through to FNM Bank um, through this program to allow him to do those additional uh, repairs to the home, including tile in the kitchen, concrete steps, carpet in the bathroom, and a uh, poured concrete driveway is what he's looking to do. So uh, just based on him receiving the grant and not uh, residing <coughs> the grant, not or having five years expired, uh, the city's still, uh, based on the grant, he'd owe money back if he were to sell it, so that's why this comes through, if that makes sense. How many more years does he have until? It's two years remaining. Two. Yep. Pretty typical for us to subrogate our, uh, this this debt to uh, most most of the mortgages that are, that are on these properties. Yeah, yep. It, it, really, this is the grant money that uh, is passed through the city to the homeowner and he owes that money back if he moves out within five years, a certain percentage each year. And since he's refinancing, they, there's a I guess note on his title that uh, he received this grant and he's still subject to repayment if he moves out. So right and the grant's from where? That's a CDBG. CDBG. Yep. Anybody from the audience, uh, questions or concerns? Council? No, thank you. Okay, Kathleen? McKimball? Aye. Scott? Yeah. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Ayes have it. Your Honor, I move for the approval of a loan agreement authorizing the issuance of a $7,130,000 general obligation refunding bond, series 2017A, and providing for levy taxes to pay the same. Second? Anyone? Second. Okay. Thank you. We've gone through the process of looking to see if we couldn't refinance our 2011 bond issue uh, for for savings. Uh, we went ahead and had our rating renewed with S&P uh, and uh, maintained our existing rating with a stable uh, outlook moving forward. Um, based off of that, we went on the out on the market uh, through Piper Jaffrey and uh, we're able to get bids on the refinancing that would save us uh, $220,000 in interest costs through the refinancing. This does not change uh, the length of the time of the bond repayment schedule. It's still the same uh, repayment time frame on here. It's, it's purely about cost savings. Uh, $220,000 represents about 3% uh, savings. 3.09% uh, savings. As we've talked with Travis in the past, uh, one of the things they base their recommendations on, on for refinancing is if there is at least a 3% level. So this was one that we were really on, on the cusp of, of whether there would be enough savings in here to justify it or not, but we, we are at that level. Uh, this would approve the, the refinancing with, with this resolution tonight. Nothing from the audience? We're saving money. All right. Council? I'm good. Yeah, fine. <clears throat> Let's take it a vote. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. All right. Mr. Scott? Two. 
Oh, uh, <coughs> I have a resolution approving an agreement with the Burlington Steamboat Days for Burlington Steamboat Days event operations and the concessions of the, at the Port of Burlington Building. Second. Thank you. One second. Um, I'm sorry, Stephanie. I think you know more of the details than I do. That's okay. This is a um, contract we negotiated with the Steamboat Days Committee. We started oh, several months ago meeting with them and working through it. And so this is the, the one we decided on that we presented. And they asked you for a reduction in the rent that we had proposed. And that's what's in this um, agreement. Do you have specific <coughs> questions? or? No questions. I just want to have an opportunity to vote on it. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. Okay. Anybody from the audience? Questions or concerns? All righty. Council, ready to vote then? Uh, no, I, just, I got a comment. I just, okay. uh, for me, I think it's in poor taste when we're already losing uh, money at the auditorium and it's money that's uh, uh, planned for and budgeted for and uh, we're changing changing the uh, price midstream. Um, I, I understand the devotion and the dedication of all the volunteers, and I do appreciate that. Believe me, I do. Um, but uh, we we established a a rent free uh, a rent fee structure that uh, included a included a loss. This just increases loss. I just I just don't feel right voting uh, for the for the. Uh, uh, change and it sets a precedent and if we're going to do it for one group why not do it for all of them I think we 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 establish a we establish a price and that's our price and uh, not to be negotiated so that's just me anybody else with comments or concerns Council? what is the difference uh, can you remind us again Steph and what the existing amount is ten thousand nine ninety five or something like that. We were looking for eleven thousand two fifty or eleven thousand three hundred. Uh, they asked for uh, four thousand. Yeah, I thought that was for four thousand. And you, at a previous meeting, agreed to go at the eight thousand. Um, if you are doing this com comparable to what some of our other events pay, uh, we provide civic music two thousand dollars a day. Um, which is below our regular rate structure as well. Um, that, in terms of what this agreement is, would equate to a $24,000 lease figure. So we've, we've historically operated on a much different rate structure for steamboat days. Because we consider them to be a 12-day... We are. We end up in a in a position where we're not able to lease the facility for any. Or is it twenty eight thousand? Is that what I'm supposed to say for fourteen days? But, but yeah, we aren't able to use the structure for anything else during that period of time. Uh, both the event is only a four day structure, but it we close down the whole, the, right. the entire facility right. and the grounds for uh, the week leading up to and several days afterwards. So in essence, what we're saying is we're charging them the four days that they actually have their celebration in progress, right? Well, that's what you compromised at. Yeah. And I mean, the, the justification for doing that, uh, as Steamboat Days has come in and made their request, is just the size of the event and what it means to the community. Right. And, and you're, you're being a partial sponsor of trying to make this be a successful thing for our community. I mean, that's, that is the, the justification for why you're doing it. But, you also are charging them a much lower rent in here than what we would do for other groups. Got any questions? Thank you. Okay, Thanks, let's take it to vote. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd just like to Come say. Here. Name and address, please. My name is Deb Bowen, and I live here in Burlington. And. Um, I do work part-time for Steamboat Days, but that's just as a, an assistant, and I'm not here in that capacity. I'm here only as a citizen. I was listening to the uh, white boxing argument. That's why I came. So I was kind of surprised to hear 
on the consent agenda that that wasn't passed because I was here at the work session last week and my understanding was this was all going to be approved. So I'm really surprised at hearing now all these questions. Steamboat Days does a lot for this city in terms of the people it brings in, the money it brings in. You can't just break it down to how much you're losing because I hate to tell you this, but you aren't going to be bringing in even the $8,000 likely in that two weeks period anyway. This is money you're going to have plus all the other money that I know they pay for other things, whether it's towards the police or you know, various other things, plus the goodwill of the people it brings to town and the money they spend here. There are so many other reasons for supporting this beyond just saying you're getting a discount. Well, we're getting a discount maybe because civic music is also, but um, this is an important event to this town, and I don't think Steamboat Days has ever asked for a discount before. You might consider that there's a reason why they're asking for it and give them a shot at keeping this event here and alive and going well. And I think the citizens of this town would appreciate that and not some concern to try and grab eleven or twelve thousand, much less twenty eight thousand dollars, because this is only a four day event. It used to be six days. Now it's four days. They need your help. And so as a citizen, I'm asking you please just approve the eight thousand and be done with it. Let's put on steamboat days. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Well said. What a sales lady. Next time I buy a car, I'm gonna bring you with me. Anybody else on steamboat days? Council? Kathleen, let's take the vote. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? No. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Okay. Um, this is the uh, the end of the meeting. So if you have something, yes, sir. We'll start for the, we're going to get you, we're going to work our way. Okay. Dane, come on. I can't hear that good, so I hopefully my hearing is bad. I lost my health insurance. I got it back, but still. <coughs> oh. Okay, I want to talk about I need, your I need your name and address, Dean. What? I need your name and address. I still couldn't get <laughs> your, your name and address? Oh, Dean, KFNSC, 2117 Northern Drive, Burlington, Iowa, <coughs> Burlington, Okay, I'll make a couple comments and I'll make this quick. Uh, number one, I saw you're going to do something about the depot turn into a sandwich restaurant thing. I got one question. Where are the people, are you still going to have the Burlington buses stop there where people get off and get on the other bus or are they going to have to move somewhere else? They'll still be able to catch a bus. They'll still be able to catch a bus there, right? That'll still be the transfer station, yes. Okay. And I, hopefully, I applaud you to get somebody to finally do something about Apollo School. I applaud you for that. Hopefully this will work out. If it doesn't, I said it before, tear it down, period. It's been vacant and it's been there long enough. I know there's some people in this town, oh, it's a beautiful building, it's historic, oh, it's architecture. Well, if you've got uh, like a man like Donald Trump or one guard, go ahead and put the money into it. But uh, I applaud you for getting somebody to do that and I always said it'd be good for apartments. Uh, good for you for starting to do something about Mount Pleasant Bridge. Uh, that needs to be done. I still say that maybe have a fundraiser to build uh, Catfish, not Catfish. Cascade Bridge. Yeah, Catfish Bridge. Have a fundraiser to build that bridge. Uh, that's, and uh, for the city of police firemen, I am for what you're talking about doing, long as it goes for that. You don't realize that 60 to 80 percent of your budget goes for health benefits, retirement benefits. And that's what people don't realize, but we do need police, we do need fire people to keep Lord order and to basically be sure our places don't burn down. That's it. Peace be with you. May the Lord Jesus Christ be your wisdom and guidance in all your decisions. Thank you, Dean. Bless you, my friend. Thank you, Dean. Dean Hot Legs Fantasy. All right. Thanks for coming down. Yes, sir. Dean, it's always a pleasure to see you. I know you didn't hear that. Did you hear what I said? 
Paul Ganakis, 1013 North Bay, Burlington, Iowa. In the beginning, this whole thing started when uh, a neighbor of mine assaulted me and I defended myself just by putting my hands up. Now, the officer, uh, Ryan Smith, two weeks before that, I asked to have him arrested and he said he would do it, but he didn't do it. So the guy assaults me. So I take it to court. This guy keeps putting it off and he was found guilty and I was found not guilty. Now when that happened, all the police cars come up by my house rolling down their windows to see if I would say hi to them. I did not say hi to none of them because of that incident. Now, all my, I'm still picketing. My picket signs are nailed to my house. I'm not done with this. I'm getting tired of it. Chief Doug Beard has a personal vendetta against me, just like my poster says. So I got ghost license plates. I got ghost people. And I'm talking to these people. Why are you following me and this and that? And then they take off. I asked four of them to come to the Bowen Police Station. When I got there, they took off. But one did. And Officer Hopper came out and said, what's going on? I said, well, he's following me. And I told him I followed him, too. Now, this is really getting out of hand. Um, July 2010, I owed attorney's fees of $19,000. I paid for those uh, uh, fees through Catfish Ban, like my shirt says here. The court took $19,000 from me, and I paid it. Now, I went out to Catfish Ban February 1st. You're welcome to look at these W-2s. I want $14,000. It is none of the uh, Chief Beard's business how much I make. One of his officers referred to me. I'm not going to give his name. He said, well, the chief thinks you make too much money. Well, it's not the chief's business what I make. Now, I'm helping my brother over in Gulfport, and uh, Officer Hilliard comes over, and Officer Jesse Hill. Officer uh, Hilliard is not drinking. He's trying to get his position to where he sees me. And the Officer Hill is acting like he's drunk. He come up to me and says, where's the ATM and this and that. He was trying to see if he could see me, what I was up to out in the forest. Can I, can I, because not that I, I don't want you to think that I'm, that I'm trying to make light of what, what's going on, but I'm saying, because we've, We've, we've heard this, you know what I'm saying? So I, I want to get down to the crux. What, what, do you want, what do you want from the council? I want Chief Beard to leave me alone. This has been going on for 11 months. These undercover cars follow me. It don't matter what, if they got Lee County, the one county, Henry County. I turn around and follow them, and they do not like it. Okay. Mr. Gunners. This needs to stop. Just like that wall says there, a great place to live. This flag. I served my, uh, in Vietnam honorably and everything. I don't need a police chief hounding me and Mr. Ganakis, Mr. Ganakis, my bills. Mr. Ganakis, Mr. Ganakis, I want to get you to calm down a little bit, please. I'm tired of it. I, I understand your frustration. We've talked about this, yeah. but I. It's been I, going on for 11 months, not but five here, months. Here's, Mr. Ganakis, here's to the point that we're at, though. There's nothing that we can do. There, there, there's nothing that there's nothing that I can do as a councilman. We, we don't have the we don't have the funds for anybody to follow you, Mr. Ganakis. I know that, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that, that's saying what I'm saying. I've got those people Mr. Me. Mr. Ganakis, no. Listen, sir, sir. What what I'm saying is is that there's nothing. Let me finish. Yes. Let me finish. Okay, what, what I'm saying is yes. is that as a councilman, there's nothing that I can do. I, I'm going to tell you now the same thing I told you before. Maybe you need to just get a lawyer and, and do what, what, what you do on that end. But as far as a councilman, you, there, there's, there's nothing that I can do. Uh, there's nothing I can do. You I don't people know what you want. can talk to him and tell him to leave me alone. He is spending the money. These uh, Mr. undercover cars. Don't. We don't have. We, we don't even have an infinitesimal amount of, of, of that money. No, no, nobody. We can't afford to have uh, somebody coming, that, that's on reserves follow you. It's coming from Mr. Ganakis. It's not coming from Des Moines County, Mr. Ganakis. It's coming from some place, and he's spending that money ridiculously. Just because I went out and paid a guy 
from a surveillance system, and that guy runs to the police station and he jumps on that and saying, Mr. Ganakis is dealing drugs when I paint my surveillance I'm gonna system have off? To, I'm going to have to. We gotta, i got to keep this moving. But Mr. Ganakis, again, I don't know what, what, as a council member, what I can do. I've, I've talked to the chief, and the chief has already confirmed that He's not concerned. Well, hey, he's got other b oh, important yeah. things to do, Mr. Well, Ganakis. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, we've got a lot of things going on. I've got to, uh, we've got to keep moving. Bill Fernal here, I asked to see him. He refused. Bill walked me over there. While he's walking me over there with three undercover Who walked cars, you? Mr. Fernal walked me over to the police station because the chief refused to see me. Now. He says, I got to go, Paul, and I thanked him. That, I had a two-hour conversation with the chief. I called him a liar 20 times. I'm not seeing these things. You, you act like I'm crazy. Mr. Ganakis, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, is again, if you've got, all I'm saying is this, because I can't, I, I don't know what else to do. But if somebody's following you, get get evidence and take it oh, to a yeah, lawyer, and they'll license. and they'll take care of it at I a got court. Pictures, I got it all. But Mr. Ganakis, this isn't a court. We're just the council. Yeah, but you can say to him, for him to stop it. I told him, I said, make sure. I said, if any of your guys are even even in Mr. Ganakis's area, you know, please make sure they're not following him. I, you know, what? there's nothing else that we can do, sir. Okay, well, I was going down Sunnyside, and there's three cars behind me. So I take a right turn, and I turn left. They come around the block, three of them in a row, and I give them the bird. Again, and Mr. Ganakis, I... Give them all the bird, because I'm tired of it. It's time to move on. My, my MOS... No, it's not time to move on. Yes. I'm going to have my say, so you can cut me off. We are going my to My MOS, he, a couple of I'm weeks ago, put his fingers like this to me when I was sitting over there. Mr. Davidson did. Mr. Ganakis. Right Mr. Ganakis. I did, Mr. Not, Ganakis. I did no I, such I want thing. To, I, I want to... I want you to remain calm. Yes. We're, we're, we're all, well, we're all brought, I, I understand I that. I, under, I understand that. It's not helping my PTSD. Mr. Ganakis, we, we, can't, we can't do it back and forth like this. So we're, and again, well, we can't. You go out in front of your building and do it? My picket signs? No, I think you need to. Get you guys to work with me. I'm going to have to, I know it, I know it, but we're going to have to, this is where the work is ended for tonight. Uh, we've got to keep moving, Mr. Yeah. Ganakis. Uh, my MOS in the United States Army was a I know. recon scout. I know. Search, destroy, kill the big bomb. I can get these guys in slow motion. We don't want to. We don't want to talk like that, Mr. Ganak. I'm just We're, saying what they're doing. Like they're doing in slow motion. They're stupid. Just gonna. They need to go back to school. There's fourteen thousand dollars here that come from cash. Catfish Bandit did not come from dope money. I understand that, but I wouldn't announce I'm that to tired. people. There might try to get your money. If I have to. I'll, I'll pick at this city hall. I know you will. I'm not done. I know. They're nailed to my house. You need to leave me alone. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna ask to we're gonna try to keep her calm now. Uh, we appreciate what you got to say. Is there anybody else from the audience that has any questions or concerns? Mr. Williams. Uh, I appreciate what I read in the Hawkeye about you're going to uh, finance these extra officers with tax money. I appreciate that, but I just. I'm going to put it out there, Lady Council Lady has already mentioned it, that the Chief's going to need two more officers after this fiscal year coming up, the following year, to replace the ones that the grant money's covering. The Fire Chief still needs six officers. You're giving him one. So I'd <coughs> like to see you put a year ahead plus this one, put a couple more firemen in, and then the, the following put three more in. Whether or not, if he gets the grant money, it's going to save you three years of that. If he doesn't get it, why? We still, we still need six more firemen. We need a couple more policemen beyond what, where we're at now. So keep that in mind when your deliberations and all that. It's, it's not an end all one year. It's going to have to be a three year plan to get anywhere near where we need to be. Thank you. Thank you, there. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Williams. I'm going to, uh, Mr. Ganakis, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to hold you off. Yes, no, sir. Okay. Mike Crowner, 2604 Kirkwood Street. I, uh, I understand we need more police officers and firefighters, and I understand that that's an expense. Um, with me owning several properties, I, I feel like you guys are always coming to the property owners when it comes time, and I understand it's that way because who else is going to pay the bill? But these are community service people, and 
I really think that it should be, uh, I, I think it'd be more fair to go for the franchise fee. That way everybody in this city is helping pay for the services that they may use instead of just property owners. I mean, it's just an opinion. I think it should, maybe it should be voted on. Maybe you guys are past that point. I don't know. But as a property owner, that's a large, large increase to me. I have 10 properties and uh, three car wash locations here in town, so that's quite a substantial increase for me along with other business owners in town. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mr. Brown. Thanks, Mike. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you for, t for tonight. Any, is there anybody else no, that we have not? Mr. Murray? Matthew Murray, um, 2050 Highland Avenue. I think it's an understatement, Council, to probably express to you that I'm extremely disappointed in uh, two out of the four decisions for tonight. You know, I've been working at this for way over a year and a half, uh, putting together, I think, a fair proposal to develop city property. Uh, you know, I'm willing to, you know, invest over $200,000 of private money into city property. Uh, I did hear anywhere in this discussion tonight that the number that was given was up to $146,000. It didn't necessarily mean that that's the amount, Mr. Davidson, that's going to be spent. See, that was my point. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, to, to dismiss it out of hand, I mean, there were some items on there that, you know, for instance, like putting a new floor in the kitchen, it's not necessary. You know, this could be, you know, a lot less. So it didn't necessarily mean that this is the amount. In fact, I never even requested that amount. My amount was far less than what was given, but staff, of course, believe that these items, of course, were necessary to bring that portion of the building under code, and I respect that. Um, you know, I'm basically, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still willing to work with, uh, you know, Mr. Fineau, you know, on this, but, you know, really at, at this particular point in time, Council, I'm, I'm very discouraged and am almost just willing to go ahead and withdraw my proposal to for Greer's Restaurant. Uh, I think it's disappointing that when you have someone that is willing to put something into city property and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's discouraging. I brought my son with me tonight thinking that this was going to be something that we were going to do together that he showed an interest in this business to bring him for civics. Yes, he did learn a lesson in <coughs> civics tonight. But, um, you know, I just wanted to, you know, let you at least know that, you know, my opinion on this. I know it's Dennis' business, but I am uh, disappointed. And I guess, you know, like Councilman or Mayor McCampbell, um, I understand Mr. Davidson expressed some of his concerns at the work session. I'm not really sure you were not here you know, why you gave a no right offhand as you did. And just at the price, just at the price tag. You know. It's, uh, it's tough to go forward with that as far as I'm concerned when I have to go back against something that I, I really don't like doing, and that's raising taxes. So um, that's pretty much where I am. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, Mr. Murray, I'm not done. It's not a, out of the picture for me. Just that I want to hear some more specific of me. Like you say, work with these guys and narrow something down. Um, so that you know, I'm not against you. No, I'm not. I'm not. I know that's it's yeah. not personal. I know it's it's it, yeah. you know, it's just that I just you know because I've had people ask me you know when it, it, it reached it reached the press, you know everyone thinks that's the amount that's going to be spent and it's it's no it's it was I think you know I mean Mr. McGregor probably can speak to this better than I can, but it was it was an amount that they felt up to that amount and that was discussed to me with economic development that we're going to up to this amount but it doesn't necessarily mean that is going to be the magic amount that's going to be spent and if anything I hope it is less yeah I'm with you Mr. Davidson I hope it's less because I live in this community too and you know I want to see first-class things happen but at the same time you know I want to be fiscally responsible like anybody else I personally live in a budget my business would live in a budget I understand the city's in budget constraints and so like I said I want I want to be you know uh, cooperative with this council with the city you know, to, to do what we can to, to bring Greer's back to life, but do it in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fashion that is going to make economic sense. And so, like I said, I just at least wanted us to point that out, that I was under the impression that this money, this number that was given by the Economic Development Board was up to that amount. I can't stress it enough, <laughs> up to that amount. And it didn't necessarily mean it has to be that particular amount. All right. Thank you very much. 
Thank you for your patience. Can't get you. I can't get you back tonight. Anybody else that we have not covered? Anybody else that we have not covered? I already got you tonight, Mr. Ganakis. I'm going to have to. You're cutting me off is what you're doing. Because I can't let you talk, Mr. Ganakis. I can't let you talk all night. I can't. We got a meeting. That's all right. I'll pick it. The city hall. Guaranteed. Mr. Tislin, anything before we close out? Uh, Annie? Nothing at this time. Got Councilman? <clears throat> yeah, every opportunity that I have moving forward, I'm going to talk about thoughts, my thoughts and ideas and what others have presented to me in, in uh, uh, trying to uh, reduce our cost as a as a city and find ways to uh, get our police officers and, and uh, firefighters and uh, nuisance people uh, and hired and, and getting their expenses covered. The first thing that comes to mind uh, is, uh, and I mentioned before, the uh, uh, privatizing of the depot. And tonight's a prime example of uh, why that needs to happen and, and, and happen quickly. Um, if business moved at the pace of government, there would be no business. There would be no private sector business. We would be, uh, as a business person, I'd be broke. And I, I understand your concerns on, on spending public monies, but in 1993, when the city took over this building, we took on a responsibility to the public to process this building and make something of it. And the reason we took that building was because nothing was being done with the building. And uh, I, I think if we were to uh, come up with a, an incentive package of some sort and uh, go through the same process that we went with the Apollo building, Maybe we can get a dozen or two dozen uh, companies that are interested, and maybe two or three of them will uh, put together a package that uh, can get that can get that building uh, uh, developed in uh, in short order. And I think if Greer's Restaurant were developed in the process that uh, or the prior to that would make it all that much more uh, uh, possible and, and probable to uh, to move that uh, move that facility. That's never been. That, that wasn't built by the city, it was never owned by the city until the city took it through eminent domain. And, uh, and we, we really have no business have, owning it, having it. We sh we've done a, a very poor job, and I've said on most of the councils since we've owned it, we've done a poor job of getting that done. And when we have an opportunity, we pass it up. Um, the other thing that I would like to present, and I think what I uh, think about this council, let's send a, uh, a letter as a council to, uh, to our legislators asking them about the ability of changing the way that we do our legal notices. Um, we're spending about $15,000 a year through, the, through the, uh, um, the city clerk's office just to print legals in the, in the newspaper. And the uh, legislature in the last year uh, changed some of those requirements where on uh, 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 bidding for sewer jobs and I think street work can now be done online at three separate locations at no cost. And we're subsidizing a private business by having to put that, put those legals in the local newspaper. Uh, most people have the ability to get online and, and look that up. I think if we as a council and if we talk to our fellow council members in other communities uh, and, and in the counties, uh, uh, get the legislators start to start looking at online um, legal notices rather than in the newspaper and, and ones that are easy to get to and easy to read. Um, I think there's an opportunity. $15,000 isn't a lot of money, but it's a lot of money. So I think we should, uh, that's the second uh, thought that I have. I'll have more for you next week. Okay. Uh, I had a tour today. Um, I had my friends from Goodwill came, and uh, I just want to say that uh, the staff really enjoyed you guys. I got a couple of people that said they're going to be watching tonight, so uh, uh, just want to say uh, thanks for, for them for coming down and uh, checking things out. Uh, they all got to sit down and be uh, the mayor for a couple of minutes, and one guy said, so are right, you're mayor for the, I said, you're mayor while you're in the chair. What would you do? 
He says, I declare that I'll stay the mayor. <laughs> and uh, he pretty much kicked me out of the chair. I told him he couldn't do that, though. But anyways, it was a, it's a good time, and I do appreciate them coming down, and uh, I'm looking forward to our next outing. So uh, it's a good time, and the staff enjoyed everybody today. So, Mayor Pro Tem? I took a tour today, too. Of a golf course? I started, <laughs> I started on hole number one and finished on hole 18. <laughs> <laughs> Out of Flint Hills, by the way, it's open tomorrow, folks, if you have a chance. Thursday, Friday, Saturday may be iffy. It <laughs> doesn't look so good, but anyway, it's a bonus time in the middle of February to be playing golf at Flint Hills. That's just tremendous. Anyway, uh, my, my group and I had a good time together. Good deal. I want to thank you all, Council, for all you do. You guys are terrific, and thank you, staff. James? We did enjoy having them in today, so thanks for bringing the group down. Uh, it's nice to be able to have groups tour through and uh, just get familiarized with what City Hall is about. And we are here for all of our community members, so they are much welcome. That's it. That's it? That's it. Okay, can I get a motion? Nick, maybe. Did you? Nick, have something? Oh, motion to close. Uh, Nick. <laughs> Sorry, I could not say it. Um, <clears throat> just to let you know about ad or, uh, public bids, we are out advertising currently for the roundabout on West Avenue and West Burlington Avenue. So it, you should see it in the newspaper uh, likely this week. Um, but we are advertised, so we'll do the letting on the 21st, hear it on the work session on March 27th, and then hopefully award bid on April 3rd, so. All right. Got to get used to that. Nothing else? Can I get a motion? Motion to close. Second. Or, yeah, close to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Kathleen. Let's vote our way out here. McCampbell. Yes, please. Scott. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Good night. Thank you. God bless you.